My name is John Irby. I am the founder and CEO of a company called Roidios. Um, We are developing with a renal assist device. Um, so let me start with a little segue. How many are in the room are familiar with the challenges in the dialysis market? The challenges in the, in the dialysis market. Excellent. So that market is premised on 126,000 new patients a year and a relatively run of it's a it's a duopoly of two giant conglomerates and the entrants even in the home dialysis space have to contend with that with that that challenge roedios is going after the 26.3 million americans who do not qualify for dialysis today and with the assistance of our technology hopefully won't for a very long time um what i'd like to impress upon you today over the course of the next couple of minutes is that we're going after a, an enormous blue ocean market. We have a different way of thinking about the world. And as such, we've been able to generate a significant IP uh, moat around our technology. Um, the technology itself is a very simple and elegant design. It's kind of a Copernican moment when you try to solve the calculations of the earth being the center of the universe to get very complicated quickly. When you realize that the sun is the center of the universe, the math gets very simple. Uh, that's what we're referring to here. Uh, we're going after, like I said, a $105 billion opportunity that is premised on 3.3 million ICU visits a year among Americans who have chronic kidney disease. Um, as such, we'll be delivering break-even in as early as 2027 and a billion dollars of earnings after tax in 2029. Uh, in terms of traction, last month we received the FDA breakthrough device designation, a very nice external validation of our approach and our um, orientation towards the technology. Like I said, that number of issued patents has now exceeded 100 in the last in the last week um, across 29 countries. So we're seeking $20 million to help us execute the last clinical trial we need, 123 patients, to get to the U.S. market. So let's talk about the problem that we're going after. Like I said, we're going after the blue ocean of chronic kidney disease. It is a massive healthcare problem in the US uh, and really no one is directly trying to address it. Um, there are AI companies that are trying to identify those patients to help doctors provide better medical care, but no one is providing tools for the physicians to actually work with. Those 35 million Americans who have any form of CKD are increasingly um, at risk for emergency department visits, hospitalizations, and surgeries. That leads to an inpatient estimated cost of $250 billion a year in the U.S. Um, and 76,000 of the 126,000 patients who start dialysis every year crash from an ICU visit. So we're shooting fish in a barrel. Um, we're going to start with cardiac surgery as our entry into the market. We're doing this strategically because the cardiothoracic surgeon runs the profit center for the hospital. These patients are a burden for that surgeon, um, and they will be our assistance in gaining access to the institution via contracts and procurement. And then the intensivist will help us carry it throughout the building. The technology is very simple, as I, as I referred to. When you understand what's actually driving the problem, the solutions can, can, can become very simple. Juxtaflow is a pair of catheters that are placed by a urologist into the outlet of the kidney, so where urine uh, makes its way to the bladder. We administer a mild controlled negative pressure suction, about one-tenth of the, the force required to drink through a straw. Uh, this allows the opportunity to treat patients who are, at, who are susceptible and going through a very high-risk uh, ex acute experience. So we're going to start in the surgical ICU and work our way through to the medical ICU. The, the thinking behind what we're doing is, like I said, it's very disruptive. Everyone views the kidney as a filter. So you need to have a higher pressure on the inlet than on the outlet. Conventional wisdom focuses on pushing more blood into the top of the, that filter. Unfortunately, the, the physiology behind that is a little more complicated and the kidney fights against that. It's called autoregulation. So the more, the higher the blood pressure you have, the less the kidney allows blood into the kidney to, to actually filter. So you're not actually changing anything. You're pushing water uphill. By administering the force on the collection side, there is no auto regulation. We immediately restore that filtration gradient. 
And then that filtration gradient is the engine that runs the kidney. Everything the kidney needs to do is premised on being able to filter. So the body's internal environment is regulated by the kidney. We have <laughs> bone metabolism, we have red blood cell production, we have hypertension, we have acid-based balance, we have electrolytes. All of that is driven by the opportunity once the kidney can filter, it can do all of those functions. The value proposition is very simple. This, this is a, you know, everyone wins. Um, the hospitals win because they turn the beds and they can make more profit. The providers win because they get better care for their patients, they get better quality scores. Um, the payers win because a commercial patient crashing into dialysis costs the commercial insurance company $650,000 before Medicare starts picking up the tab. It won't take many um, avoidance of a crash into dialysis to make uh, the insurance companies take notice. Is there data on how many people crash into dialysis? Yeah, 76,000 patients a year crash into dialysis from an ICU. Marty, what was your question? How, how many, many patients crash into dialysis from ICU? You just said 75,000. At 600,000, wow. at 650,000. <laughs> I believe this is a large reason why the changes are failing. It doesn't take, and it's, you won't see it in the numbers because it's it's a very small number of individuals driving a very massive cost. What's the driver for the need for that? Why why do you crash into it? Is it just so our simple view of this is it's susceptibility plus stress yields bad outcome. So having a susceptible kidney, you've got chronic kidney disease, it's not working at 100 percent And you put them through either a surgery, which is a trauma on the body, put them on a, a heart lung machine, which is a trauma on the, the circulation. Etc. Or you or they get sepsis, in which case they have a cytokine storm, and that's a uh, stress on the environment that tips the kidney over the edge. Our technology will allow those organs to be viable through the rest of the ICU, shorten the length of stay, and give the patients a chance to survive. Business model is very simple. This is razor and blade. We've got disposable units. Um, we're based on the presumptions today. This will be a value based price. But based on what we expect to see in terms of data, we'll sell the disposable units at $7,500 per unit. It costs us $400 to make those. Uh, we have pharma margins on a very uh, concentrated business model. We've been ISO certified for 13485 for four years. Uh, this is a class two device, so it's a de novo submission to the FDA. We've recently gotten our breakthrough designation and they're already existing codes. We'll work to optimize them but the provider gets a, a payment for placing this just like it would for stone management. And we're taking the DRG coverage and making it more profitable for the institution um, as our means of, of having the hospital pay for the technology. Our strategy of, of conquering the market is, like I said, penetration. We're gonna start with A, going after the $100 million opportunity that is cardiac surgery, using the alpha male, the cardiothoracic surgeon, to pound their fist on the chest and help us get it through the procurement process. Once we're in the building, we'll do additional studies on major surgery and sepsis and heart failure, which we've already had clinical data on heart failure, um, to get to expand that market to a $1.6 billion opportunity. There is competition. Um, a lot of people are trying to push more blood into the, into the kidney, like we're talking about. If you look at the, the technologies on the left, we don't believe those results are going to be very, very um, encouraging because the kidney will fight and, and diminish that response. In addition, not only do you have to deal with the risk of having a technology placed in the circulation in terms of thrombosis, but also infection. Um, same thing will happen on those that are on the venous side. There are multiple technologies that are in play that we do not believe will actually generate kind of results that will sustain kidney function. So we're playing in what we believe is a blue ocean opportunity. Again, That's surrounded right. by a hundred. And there's guys. nobody else who does this right now? No, not, no, well, there are, like, there are a lot of people that you see the competition who are trying to solve the problem. We're unique in our approach to solving that. We've been able to build a significant team, uh, strong leaders who have uh, got great experience in this space. We have a 15 and 0 record with the FDA. And every time we generate a new piece of data, we're gaining uh, significant more attraction from the academic market. The financials get ridiculous very quickly. Uh, every forecast is wrong, but let's focus on the key, the three key assumptions here. $7,500 price, 
um, a terminal 18% share of the CKD segments in their respective markets. So we'll waterfall these. And then a three-year time to peak in each of those respective indications. Because of our tax efficient structure in the Bahamas and our ability to have a high margin product, we'll be pulling down a billion in earnings after tax in our third year on the market. Timeline and ask, we've raised 24 million to date. We're looking for a $20 million Series A to help us finish the pivotal trial. And uh, we'll need a $35 million Series B in approximately a year to help us build the commercial infrastructure to launch the product. So you're gonna self-distribute? We're building to take this to IPO. If a, if a white knight comes across the table with a big check, we'll obviously entertain discussions, but I wanna make sure that we're ready to execute against this should no one come. And what's the big check? An acquisition. So, I mean, our tip, our approach right now is to build to an IPO, but there is the opportunity to have an exit um, via acquisition as well. It's highly likely that a company like this will be acquired before it will get to an IPO. I just don't want to take that chance. Yeah. So I'm going to be prepared. And it'll help our negotiation <laughs> position too if we're, if we're Peekaboo certified and ready to go I IPO in 2026. Uh, that should help the right. negotiations you're going on our going trip and somebody buys you before yeah. you get there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. So juxtaflow is the bottom circle. That is the market that we've talked about. That's the $105 billion TAM. We have two other technologies that we've already had designs and IP around that take us out into the community. The big hairy project here is our pacemaker for the kidney. This is envision a scenario where you have you've been in the hospital three times and the doc said, you know, the reason you're in the hospital is because your kidneys aren't doing their job. Let's give you this technology and plant it in you. You'll wear it 24-7, 365 to keep you from coming back to the hospital, to keep you from eventually needing dialysis. So if you think about what the pacemakers and CRT market has done for a cardiac, that's what we'd like to do for kidney, which is a much bigger opportunity. Any questions? How big is this little pacemaker? Well, the pacemaker part hasn't been designed, but it's going to be the the, the Minimum viable product will probably be twice the size of CRT can. It'll go in the abdomen. Do you have a mock-up? We've done, uh, we have pro working prototypes of the middle product, the percutaneous access with an external pump. Uh, we have designs, not, not a working prototype for that. But that's an engineering problem. This physics has been solved. We just have to make it biocompatible, and, and there are lots of people who can help us do that. That's a solvable problem. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a sense, is sizing part of the problem or has I think that been solved? sizing and placement are uh, a combined problem. I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to have to make it comfortable to wear. So that's if so it's in the peritoneum, if it's in your gut, you've got a lot more flexibility. It's on the, it's, but it's at the if, not the when stage in terms of design. I believe that's a when, not an if. Okay. I, I knew I, that's that's engineering. We've done pumps. Um, we've done all kinds of things in human bodies that we, you know are much more complicated than this. The product that I launched before I started this was CardioMems, and they figured out how to measure the pressure inside a pulmonary artery over the community. I mean, this is but that's tough you're down. still in the process of engineering a prototype, not yeah, that's a heavy lift. That'll be a PMA. That'll take years to develop. So I'm not wasting resources on that one until I have revenue to support it. So we're going after we're laser focused on getting the market with just the flow and making that profitable. It's a big enough market to sustain a company. Mm -hmm. The next one's even bigger than that. So, but I want to make sure I've got runway to, I don't want to run out of money trying to do something incompletely. So you're trying to create a platform for this. Exactly. Uh, okay. Great. So, uh, great. Is there milestones for this in terms of the capital that you're raising? Uh, we're open to, you know, we're sort of vehicle agnostic at this point. I'm looking for a lead. Um, we have soft circles around probably half the, the capital we need. Uh, so it's really finding a credible source to, to help us price the round. Can you go back to the prior page? Sure. You you mean you need a lead investor? I need a lead investor. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a lead investor. So, both, yes. you know, so you know that family offices will not be lead investors 95% of the time. I agree. They're just yeah. for tax purposes. Yep. As co-investors, once they become lead investors, it changes the whole circumstance of their investment. Correct. I think so. So where is this company based? So we're done with South of the Bahamas? And we have US, we have a US subsidiary to do R and D in the US. Where? In Roswell, Georgia. Oh. But does it matter that somebody's doing something about Bahamas or no? I, I, I we'll end up with an, uh, an effective tax rate of about five percent. 
So that's an extra thousand dollars profit on each device hour. So, you know. But you're, you're electing to be subject to US um, FPR regulations. Oh, yeah. I'd like to sell in the US. Yeah. 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 So US will be our first market. Europe is, yeah, sorry, second market. But. Bahamas is not much of a market. <laughs> No, in fact, I don't. I don't expect to have operations in the Bahamas from a selling perspective. They go to Miami. So in intellectual property, we have hundred issued patents. Okay. So because we thought of this differently, and we were very aggressive about, and they've been awarded issued hundred issued. Yeah. Oh. yeah, in twenty nine countries. So we've protected what matters. We're, we've made it very difficult for someone to try to reverse engineer this. Do you have slide on this? On your patents, do you have a slide on just sort of what's on patents? Uh, in terms of the family, no. Um, we have the <laughs> corporate discipline one. Let me see if we can pull that one up. So this is, and that's dated, sorry. Um, this is an evolving landscape. But um, we have seven families of patents that protect. Um, most of those are directed towards ureteral tools to administer a fluid column in the renal pelvis. You know, think of the renal pelvis, think of it as a latex balloon. Sucking on that tissue is not easy. That's the that's the physical challenge we had to overcome to be successful in this space. So fantastic. 